So what is your Irishness? How would you define it? I think a lot of it's in my hair, that puff pastry I wear in my head. I think there's a lot of Ireland in here. I like your hair. I know you do. I've, <laughs> I've read the letters, and you've got to stop, okay? <laughs> Conan O'Brien is one of the most influential figures in the U.S. entertainment industry. Earlier this summer, he became host of The Tonight Show, a show that is widely regarded as the flagship program of the U.S. networks. It was, as they say, far from such celebrity that his family came. The O'Briens landed in America soon after the famine in Ireland. This is O'Brien Castle. This is my castle. It's up here on the cliffs of Moher. I have no idea why my ancestors abandoned it. But you grew up in a big family. I grew up in a big Smart family. A tough family. Let's not let's not go that far. We weren't tough okay, and we're stupid, really not smart. Weak. Weak and stupid, <laughs> I'll prefer. The truth about my family is the O'Briens of Brookline, Massachusetts are 100% Irish, meaning my people emigrated uh, from Ireland in uh, around the time of the Civil War, just before the Civil War in the 1850s and 1860s. That's when they came here. They uh, settled in central Massachusetts in farm country and then married other 100% Irish Catholics and continued to do that all the way through to my parents and my generation. So and do you reckon by inclination did this become I think that's all I think Irish Catholics I think what happened is Irish Catholics just lived in small Irish Catholics lived in small Irish Catholic towns and who would you meet at church you'd meet another Irish Catholic and that's just the way it happened. Conan O'Brien grew up in Boston and by all accounts, it was a stable and happy family environment. So what was the family like? What was it like? Uh, well, I'll tell you. <laughs> we loved each other. That's the important thing. We'd gather around the, the flames every night because our house was often on fire. We weren't very smart. We didn't have an oven, per se. But uh, we were kindly people. And I'm using the past tense because uh, I don't speak to them anymore. <laughs> They're dead to me. Uh, I come from, I'm one of six. And my father's a research scientist. My mother uh, is, uh, w uh, she's still alive, but she's a retired uh, partner in a big law firm. So very, my parents were very well educated people. Who, who, and, and really, when you think about it, my family is kind of, in many ways, it's the Irish Catholic dream because my mother's father was a uh, directed traffic in Worcester, Massachusetts. He was a traffic cop and uh, my father's father worked at a bank, but neither of them had been to college. And then my father, uh, on full scholarship, goes to Harvard Medical School. And my mother went to Yale Law School and was one of the first women to go to Yale Law School. So I come from that background. They produce this son, and I go and become an ass on television. And I've ruined everything. What do they think of you? Their opinion of me softened when I started paying my own rent. The minute I found that you start paying your own rent, your parents are okay with almost any profession. You know, if I was a serial killer but I made money at it, my parents would say. The young Conan seemed to be following in his father's footsteps when he entered Harvard. But soon his inclinations led him away from the conventional career that his parents might have expected. They knew that I was always interested in comedy and I had had some success even as a young guy in college. I had had success. I had you, written... were a, you were a, a freshman genius. I don't know if I was a genius, but I, uh, I mean, I'm a genius now. I don't know yeah, if I was a genius yeah. then. Um, a genius in training. Yes, but I, uh, I worked, uh, I, I wrote a lot of comedy, and I was very interested in performing comedy. So my parents knew that I had a little bit of an inclination that way, and that I had had some success. So when I told them I was going to try, I think they thought, all right, well, let's see how this goes. And pretty quickly, I got a job out in Los Angeles. And once you have a job, and it got me into the Writers Guild of America, and I'm getting a check, and I have my own credit cards, I was legitimate, I think, in their eyes. Students, 
Conan went back to Harvard 15 years after his graduation to give the commencement speech. And I thought exactly what you were now thinking. What's going to happen to me? Will I find my place in the world? Am I really graduating a virgin? <laughs> As a writer, I was an extrovert. As a writer, I would make the other writers laugh and I would perform for the other writers. That sort of started to become my identity as a writer. And I always knew, I mean, very soon after I got out to Los Angeles, I started saying, I've got to find an improv group. I've got to find other people I can perform with because I need to do it. It was a little bit, it's instinct. It's like a salmon swimming upstream and then performing in an improv troupe. Before long, Conan was back in New York, working as a writer on Saturday Night Live. For decades, America's top comedy show, he also sometimes performed on screen. Even at Saturday Night Live in my 20s, my, my early and mid-20s, I was thinking about how should this be performed? What's the best way to shoot it? What's the good time for this joke to be revealed? talking to the director, talking to the cast. What are your best memories of it? What, what were the high points of that? You know, doing that show in Rockefeller Center, there's something about being... Big time. It's the big time. I mean, I had been working on these other shows out in Los Angeles, but I had never been around real stars. I had never been around big, you know, big names. You show up at Saturday Night Live, and two hours after showing up, they, they put you in a room with Steve Martin or Robin Williams, or Tom Hanks, and they say, and that, and that person looks at you and says, what do you got? Writing for star performers on Saturday Night Live may have seemed about as good as it could get for Conan, but after a few years, he decided it was time for him to move on, even though he didn't have a clear idea of where exactly he was going. Uh, I got into a real melancholy place, and for about three days, just wandered around New York, I just ended a relationship. I was depressed. I was walking around, and I was reading the poems of Seamus Heaney. You're He's being, just the man for Yeah, that. and you're being very melodramatic, and so I had a, a, a copy of Seamus Heaney poems in my back pocket, and I was wandering on New York and stopping on park benches and reading Seamus Heaney and thinking, maybe now I'll be a writer. I don't know what I'll do next, a writer of poems. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to find myself.